Even though interest rates are going up, even though the amount of homes for sale is going up, even though the amount of homes we've sold is going down, even though the amount of buyers buying homes is going down, prices are still going up. All right, so this is kind of crazy, but interesting at the same time, because so far this year, we are setting inflation record highs. Our central bank has promised to increase what's called the federal fund rate at half a percent for the rest of the year, which also happens to be the fastest pace in the last 20 years. CNBC reports that Americans have started to dip into their savings accounts and that this year we have $9,000 less on average than we did the year before. Bloomberg reports there's a $5 trillion wealth shock thanks to the stock market having its worst start to the year since 1939. Crypto just lost $300 billion off its market cap last week thanks to the collapse of a stablecoin. The Wall Street Journal says that real estate growth is on borrowed time at this point. We got our first negative GDP reporting, which means we are halfway through starting a recession. And yet, CNBC also reports we're nowhere near a recession. So things are bad, but ultimately they're good. Sometimes it's really hard to separate fact from fiction in the news these days, especially because the people that have a house to sell you will tell you now is a great time to buy, especially before interest rates go even higher. But going forward, I don't think that kind of growth is gonna be sustainable, and I think the market has already started to soften. So I wanted to show you some data that helps support that observation. The most obvious observation that I found is that I don't think anyone could have predicted just how crazy real estate would explode in value. For example, before the recession in 2020, the median home value was $329,000. Today, it's closer to $429,000, which is a 30.4% increase in just the last two years, which is especially crazy when you remember that real estate should typically grow anywhere between three to 5% in a normal year. But looking back at everything, hindsight is 2020, and it's kind of obvious how it happened the way that it did, because we dropped the federal fund rate to zero, and we printed more money than we ever have before. In 2020, we had $15 trillion, and today we have over $21 trillion. Now hold on, to put in perspective just how crazy that number is, that is a 40% increase of all the money that has ever existed in just the last two years. So of course, the price of materials, the cost of labor, and supply chain problems made everything more expensive. Combine that with hedge funds chasing yields which they couldn't find because interest rates were close to zero, which forced them to buy residential real estate to give themselves any kind of a return that made the problem even worse. Combine that with stocks and crypto and other asset classes going up in value like crazy, which gave us more confidence because it made us richer on paper, which meant we went out and spent more money, which made the problem of inflation even worse. So now we find ourselves here where the market is correcting big time, but real estate hasn't, which is weird because normally when interest rates are low, you can expect to pay a little bit more for a house because there's more people competing and they put up higher offers. But when interest rates are high, like they are now, you should expect for prices to be lower because people could afford less, so they make lower offers. So inventory goes up, prices go down to meet demand, but they haven't yet which is weird. So the question is, is it better to buy now or is it better to wait? So first, let's address the elephant in the room, which of course are interest rates. The national average for mortgage interest rates on a 30-year fixed rate mortgage has gone up to 5.25%. And because of that, a few really interesting things have started to happen. One thing that really stood out to me is that mortgage payments have gone up 44% year over year to the point where now the median monthly payment on a new home purchase has gone up to $2,427 a month, which is especially crazy when you remember the fact that last year, that same exact house was going for less Less than $1,500 a month. And because of that, we've started buying fewer homes, which is also why mortgage applications for new home purchases have gone down 2.4% when compared to the month before and down 10.6% when compared to the same April last year. And the reason that I say April, by the way, is because our numbers are always lagging one month behind. So when May's numbers come out in June, it'll definitely be worse because remember, the federal fund rate was increased this month 
on May 4th. So the people that bought in April got that better rate and the people buying after are not gonna get as good of a rate which is also why competition is gonna be lower, which has already dropped to the lowest levels in over a year. Now, 60.7% of homes have competing offers. And the last time the numbers were that low was last year in March. Now, don't get me wrong, 60.7% is still really high. That means the majority of homes for sale have multiple offers, but the numbers are already starting to go down, partially because our inventory is also going up. For example, last month at the end of April, there were 1.03 million homes for sale, but that was already a 10.8% increase from the month before. So we are slowly starting to build up inventory, which usually means a softening of the market. Another interesting statistic that I found is the amount of new home buyers entering the market has also started to shrink. We are now at 28% of first time home buyers, which is down from 31% a year ago. Now that's not a huge drop, but you also have to remember that we just started to raise interest rates, which means that number will probably continue to go down as the Fed plays catch up. Even though interest rates are going up, even though the amount of homes for sale is going up, even though the amount of homes we've sold is going down, even though the amount of buyers buying homes is going down, prices are still going up. It's crazy because if you were to tell someone everything I just told you under normal market conditions, they would 100% bet on homes to go down in value but they haven't yet. In fact, the median price of existing home sales is $391,000 as compared to last year's April when it was closer to $303,600. It's crazy. It's hard to make sense of it all, especially if you try looking at this chart. Homes are selling just as fast this year in April as they did last year with an average of only 17 days on the market. Sales to investors are also the same as they were last year at 17% and cash sales are up 1% from last year. 88% of all homes that were sold last month were listed on the market for less than a month. 88%, it's crazy. So yes, even though inventory is going up 10.8% from March, which usually means prices go down, that's not saying much because we are still down 10.4% from last year's April. So we barely have any homes left for sale. Now, my question is, is this price growth sustainable or are we gonna go down? I'm not convinced that we're in a bubble in the sense that prices will crash like they did in 2008, but I'm also not convinced that prices will continue growing at this crazy rate. The biggest mistake that I'm seeing people make right now is the assumption that because our inventory is low and demand is high, that everything's gonna be a-okay and it will continue to stay that way. Right now, on a global level, US real estate is still actually very cheap, which I know is crazy to say, but let me prove it to you. Because on average, here in the US, when people buy a house, they would spend four and a half times what they make per year. Now, obviously, certain places of the US are a lot more expensive, like LA, which is closer to 8.7, and other places are cheaper, like Cleveland, which are closer to 1.8, but the average is about 4.5. Now, to put that in perspective, other parts of the world, like for example, Vancouver, is 11 times. Kingston is 16 times what people make in a year. And in certain parts of China, it's an excess of 30 plus to slow down inflation. But the bet that I made is that seven years from now, rates will go back closer to zero, or at least lower than what they are today. And I could be wrong. And that's okay, because that's why I took out a loan that I could afford even with the higher rates. But if I was in the market to buy a house today, then I would probably buy as long as I could afford it. I would put down as least amount of money possible up front, even if it means paying the PMI temporarily as long as I could afford it, because my bet is that rates will be lower in the future, at which point I could refinance, get the lower rate, and if I'm still annoyed by the PMI, I could pay the difference of 20% to get rid of it.